welcome everybody. Merry Christmas and all that. Um, we've worn this meeting appropriately in three places around town and on the website and emailed to interested parties so we can move forward tonight and um, start off with the minutes from the last meeting on December 12th. And they look good for me. I just found <coughs> one typo um, saying South Hill instead of South Hollow on page two. Yeah, yeah. It, there's another thing here on the bottom that uh, in the past, the select board on this road, the Sherman Road, approved to put a gate on there. I haven't found where they approved that, so mm -hmm. I'm still looking for that, mm -hmm. trying to oh, figure so that out. Yeah, it's, you, you put down a, the select board approved it. I'm not sure they approved this. Oh, okay. I think the guy, the two previous owners before is what Bruce was telling me. They established the gate without permission. Okay. And I haven't found where the select board approved that. But I, according to Bruce, they just let it go. So, um, so with those couple changes, did you have any changes? No, I did not. So, I just covered it. All right, I move to approve the minutes with those few changes. Second. All in favor? Aye. All right. All right. And <clears throat> hey, good timing. That was the next item on our agenda was um, coming in to chat about the Granville first response. And what do we got in this printout here with all this very small print? <laughs> <laughs> So, what you um, have there is, um, and Daniel has the same thing, um, a list of uh, Werva calls to Rochester, mm -hmm. only Rochester, and the ones highlighted in yellow are the ones that Granville were not able to respond to. Okay. Now, that is incorrect. Okay. Uh, those calls are the ones that, according to the Werva reports, there was no confirmation whether or not first response was on scene. There's a lot of reasons that that could have been. A lot of it is just whether or not the crew took the time to put the check in the box. Um, they typically do not keep track of whether or not first response is on scene. That's up to the Warbur crew to put right. the check in the box? Yes. So do you have a list of ones that you did attend that would correct this? So looking looking through that call list, and I'm actually glad that you went to Werva and had that information printed out because um, about 40% of the time the information actually correlates with what we have. I was able to find that 20% of the calls, there were 107 total this calendar year, 20% of those Granville was never even called to. Um, and that goes back to a dispatching issue that we have been fighting with for about a, month, a year and a half or more. Um, our 911 call center is not dispatching first response at the same time as the ambulance service or the fire departments. Um, that's a topic that I had brought up at our officers meeting with Rochester and Hancock quite a few months ago. And that led us to go down the path of switching our dispatch centers, which we are actively uh, seeking right now. Um, of the 87 EMS calls we were called to in Rochester, I can confirm we were there for 93% of them. There are some reports that I do not have, and there is one call that I know we did not have personnel for. Um, the as in the past, um, the working hours of the week, Monday through Friday, 5 a.m. to 5 p.m., that is the toughest time uh, that we have staffing. And that's the case for any volunteer organization. That's just when people are working. Um, 
So the, the answer to that is recruiting. We got to boost our numbers. Um, you know, and that's something that now that we're out of COVID, we can start going door to door, talking with people again and holding <coughs> training exercises to get people certified. Uh, so you're saying that out of all of the times that you were toned out in the last, in 2022, mm -hmm. that there was only one call that you did not respond to? One call that I know of, yeah. I have a scanner. Mm -hmm. I, I do hear you get toned out, but I don't hear any response that you responded quite often. And some I, of, I'm sorry, I have to say that. Yeah, some of our personnel do uh, call in by cell phone as well. They will call the barracks and let them know that they're on route or on scene. Okay. So between people using their phones to call in that they're responding and WERVA not checking off the boxes, that's where you're closing the gap of saying that you have responded to all but one call um, in, the, in 2022. Correct. So how many people have you got on your crew now? We have 18 active. Yeah. I believe that's... Oh, I know that. Yeah. On the yeah. government first response side. If you're a fire department member, are you also first response? Or yes. All of okay. our members are certified to some level for EMS. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And what would you hope to bring that number up to with the recruiting more? I want to see an active roster of 30 people. Mm -hmm. So right now, between now and let's say when we start this next budget year, so we're in this current budget year, um, how many responders do you have during the day? Um, it varies. Um, you know, it, it depends on what people's work schedules are like. Mm -hmm. um, I know I have one member that works on your highway department that is not allowed to respond to calls. Um, and, you know, I, <laughs> I understand there's only one person that's available during the day. Um, I'm not sure where that information would have come from. Okay. And you are available, let's say, at 5.30 in the morning, or is that when you are leaving to go to work? No, I'm, I'm gone 5 a.m., 5 p.m. Okay. <clears throat> so are we looking to make first response a guaranteed 24 seven service. I think the only way that I can do that is if I pay people to be on call. And you used to pay a stipend for calls, is that correct? Uh, we tried that, um, you know, that most of the people who uh, receive money for that would donate it back to the department. So the program really didn't boost participation or attendance at calls. Um. And so you are also uh, working hand in hand, obviously, with the fire department. It is one organization. So the, the, the funding that you're requesting doesn't go into stipends, it's going into supplies, um, gasoline, um, I, where, where does this funding going if, uh, without a stipend, um, certifications and training? Right, all of that is detailed in our budget. Yeah, report. I just like to have it on the record for ORCA. Yeah, 
So yeah, that pays for maintenance on the rescue vehicle, training, supplies. And you're looking uh, to improve the fire station for the benefit of the fast squad? Uh, partially, partially, yes. Okay. Okay. That's a good thing. These programs where you are looking for more recruitment, so are, are they going to? Are those wheels going to be in motion within this next budget season? Because it's a, a, a four-month process, six-month process. No, it, it can take about a year to get somebody certified licensed as an EMT. So we will uh, probably be going into the budget still short-handed, but hopefully coming out of the 24 budget with full staff. Do you, you just did a training program uh, within the last year, right? Uh, we did last November, I believe it was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that picked up a couple new people? Yep, that did. And so when you do the next one, you'll you'll plan on picking up a couple more people? Or? No, oh, yeah. Um, it's all going to depend on who's willing to volunteer. Um, a lot of that focus is going to be here in Rochester, trying to recruit additional members. That's where our population is. Uh, that's where most of the call volume is. Mm -hmm. uh, I did so. my six years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, if you know anybody that is interested, um, another quirky thing, um, I think there may be some interest on the Rochester Fire Department and members joining, but I believe the bylaws actually prohibit Rochester members from being members of any other fire department. Um, so would would restructuring a little bit help you? I mean, you know possibly. Being an independent being independent from your fire department or is that um, just too much of a nightmare to well, become your own Yes, yeah, as, as far as separating the two, you're feeding another animal. Um, well, we did it here, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I, yeah, we had, we had decided when we started first response that it would be under the fire department, and um, it's in a lot of ways easier. Mm -hmm. um, Switching to Middlebury, mm -hmm. what is that going to do? Um, there'll be... You may be getting your communications quicker because it's coming through Middlebury Dispatch. Is that what I want to say? Yeah, Middlebury Ambulance. Okay. Yeah. Um, so at that point, will you be able to speak to Werva as well? Will there be a... a... So we are still going to have access to all the same radio frequencies. Uh, we are working with uh, Matt Parrish at Werva uh, so that... You know, especially in the first few months, we're going to be monitoring multiple radio frequencies. Mm -hmm. um, and I will be receiving reports from him on a regular basis so that we can compare um, the tone times. Um, you know, right now, that was another thing I noticed in that report. Uh, we have experienced delays of as much as 20 minutes in the time that we're was called when we are called and 20 minutes say why call at that point right um you know we can't be an effective part of the team with that kind of a delay they did it, yes i do i do hear that often um and i pay attention to it but I don't know that it's often that Werva takes 20 minutes to remind dispatch to call you. It certainly no, wasn't today. And it's, it's not their responsibility to do that. But it's to their benefit to the, have you there, like today with the, the supposed car accident. Yeah. Um, the, you know, they, they came right back to dispatch and asked for you to get toned out. Right. And that is something that I have asked them to do. Um, Really, that is the dispatcher's job 
mm -hmm. to tell them the necessary agencies, and they are not doing that. Right. Um, that is due to a lack of staffing on their end. Mm -hmm. There are 36 positions down there, and last I knew, there were only 18 filled. Mm. So. Yeah, I can notice that as well. Anybody else have any other questions? I don't. Appreciate you coming in. Okay. Absolutely. Um, is there, aside from staffing, I know that's that's a major concern to you. Um, are there any any other services, um, anything else that we could address in the coming year? What are you asking? You want to expand your services? Well, I know um, that backcountry rescue. That's that's something that is on our radar um, because of the trails mm -hmm. and, and yeah. all that are going in. That's going to become more of a, a of an issue for us to deal with. Um, do you have anything else on your radar? Well, that that is something that I mention often, um, and uh, we do depend or rely on Killington services for rescue right now. But on a on a hefty day, um, they could be very busy over in the Killington area <laughs> if we yeah. have if we need their help. Um, so I do support any entity, and I, and I know that. ROC is uh, attentive to that. They're, they're paying some pretty close attention to that aspect right now. Um, so maybe you'd want to get in touch with them and, and see. Um, in addition to the fire department, they have been called out for those type yeah. of calls. So um, the more service we have, the better, um, because we want the trails to be supported Right. And um, I do know that um, one time I encountered someone that uh, had some 9, 10, 12-year-old kids, and um, they were reluctant to use our trails because of the factor of if they got hurt or if they got lost. <laughs> so they were going to the Killington trails, which are much more mon monitored. Okay. and safe for their children. We want to expand into that and, and make our trails, make people feel safe on our trails as well. Sure. So. Yep. Well, right. I'm good. Thank good. you. Yep. Appreciate it. Right. I, yeah, so we needed to drag you in on an evening meeting yeah. as you yeah. work during the day. Yep, yeah. yep. So, such is life. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. right. All right. Thanks for coming in, Dan. Thank you, Daniel. Thanks. Keep up the good work. All right. Um, <clears throat> hey, neighbors, open house. What is this? Is right <laughs> so, hey, neighbors. <laughs> hey, so neighbor. There is um, one of the things that we do the report committees formed when the Vermont BC, when John Copens came and did that right. um, rural development, the process for the community. Mm -hmm. And so um, Beth Ken and I are now chairs of the housing committee. Sandy Haas had been the chair and she just had too much on her plate. So Beth and I volunteered to take it over. So our, we have a very small committee um, and we had met several times, twice with um, John's colleagues um, several times on our own and when we met with um, with John's colleagues they had brought in housing people from different areas to talk to us and mm -hmm. one of them was from Warren Waitsfield the Mad River Valley um, and basically the one clear message that they had was whatever you do you need to find out if the community is supportive of housing in terms of, you know, do they see things as a problem? What are the needs? And so 
In order to do that, we have Carolyn Cruikshank is on our housing committee. You know, we, we talked a lot about there's a lot of new people in town. And Carolyn said, you know, years ago we used to have a welcome wagon and we'd reach out to people and, and with COVID and all these viruses, how do you do that? And so we put our heads together and decided the first step before you can bring a community together to say, hey, you know, what are the issues? You need to find out who the community is. And so we wanted to just do a welcome to new people, because there's a lot of new people, even like on my little street, you know, three new families mm -hmm. um, out of, you know, six houses, um, and kind of see if we can get people to come to an event where we invite businesses, we invite community members that have been here forever. Um, just, we we're gonna get bags from Cabot Cheese and people could just go around and find out, you know, who are the, the plumbers, the electricians, the snowplow people, the restaurants, um, services, you know, massage and, you know, any, any kind of services that, there's, there's a lot of things that, that many people don't even know um, exist in this town. Mm -hmm. um, the same with the trails and, and just do a kind of an open house at the uh, farmer's market. There were 450 people that came to the farmer's market, which was a pretty good turnout. And so we were thinking something like kind of come in, come through, um, meet people. You know, we were thinking of getting maps um, and people could actually put where they lived because half of them don't even know mm -hmm. the different parts of town. So the issue is this. We want to do it at Pierce Hall, um, but we don't have any budget or money. And it's $200 to rent Pierce Hall and $200 for um, the cleaning fee if they, if they need it. They usually return it. But um, we, we didn't know if there are any funds available, community funds. I don't know if there's anything that might. Um, we were hoping, like volunteerism, to have the fire departments, the town, the town office departments, you know, where, especially with town meeting coming up, where people can volunteer to be on one of the committees. Um, so that's what we're planning. We we're, were hoping to do it at Pierce Hall on January 29th from 11 to 3. And we were going to ask different places to donate food or drink or we haven't figured that out yet, but we're hoping that that might be a possibility. I would think that would be a, a reasonable ask of the Rebuild Rochester organization yeah. to, to do that because it's basically in support of the community supporting itself and each other. So, that, so how... And that concept, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's a Is that, how, you know, we're kind of on a short timeline. Yeah, Is that a long timeline. process? Yeah. That's, um, do you have copies of the application? Mm -hmm. I have an application I can give you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that can probably turn around pretty quick too. Yeah. Okay. And then we can, yeah. Uh, yep, we can get that right over to. And the Becky donated asked if we were part of Rochester Rebuild, and I said, I don't know if these committees like Jeff Gephardt's doing the Energy Committee. Right. There's a that's Farmers a, Committee. That's a town thing with what Jeff is. He's our Energy Coordinator <clears throat> for the town, so mm -hmm. that's a that's an appointed position. But no, this sounds separate from the Rebuild Rochester Committee, but it's uh, like. I think that it's um, a perfect ask for the, okay. the, the expense that that would be. Yeah. And, and it is and sort of in line with it, it yeah, anyway, yeah, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. And these two ladies have been very helpful. So, yeah. I appreciate that. And I think it would be a nice thing. The other thing that our little committee is thinking of <laughs> that some people might not like, but some might. Um, is an information booth. Now, 100 years ago, there used to be one on the park, but that's not where we would suggest mm -hmm. that something like that goes. But there is there is that little park by the fire station or the parking lot across the street to you know, have some type of place where people can get information um, well, you know, the, there's one side of that sign for the Riverbrook Park that has been 
waiting for something to populate it. Is that down there? Yeah. Is that right by okay. the fire station? There's yep. that little kiosk sign, and to yeah. the north it says Riverbrook Park, and on the south side it's it's blank. And Nancy had, had suggested at one point that would be a great place to maybe put up some historical pictures of the mill pond that used to be there and what have you. But that, you know, mm -hmm. it's not crazy big, but it might be a, a good starting point for, um, you know, it's yeah. not like right in the center of town, but. Well, yeah. actually, I think it's better that it's, it, there's parking across the street mm -hmm. and it's convenient that people can go and check things out because rather than the center of town, yeah. actually. Okay. We will be installing EV charging stations. So which side of this, is it going to be on the parking lot side? Yeah. 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 And so that may also be if somebody's stopping by right. and charge yeah. their car. They see reading material yeah. they had for they got right. 40 minutes yeah. to spare. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah. I believe that uh, be, be after the welcome wagon, one of the things that newcomers uh, flocked to was that um, phone book that yes. Nancy used to work on. We I still talked about that. I, I, I still cling to my 2018 <laughs> one or whatever it was. Yeah. Um, and, and that was a very good resource. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, something in that format without the phone numbers, there was a lot of advertising in there. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that was really the go-to. Um, and then Front Porch Forum kind of replaced it um, for, you see people all the time going on there going, mm -hmm. you know, who can, who can plow my driveway? <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, I yeah. think with the, with the phone directory, the cell numbers. Yeah, yeah. I'm not saying we need a phone yeah. directory. Really caused the for demise an advertising of it. medium, it was really great. Yep. To see, you know, the yellow pages, who did what. Yeah. Where do I well, get we, firewood? Right. Yeah, that might be something that would like be that. a good for mm -hmm. thing for you guys to address too, is maybe put out a, a small yellow pages for the valley. I know that, um, that Bethel be has, something. they started um, handing out owner's manuals, I think they called it. Um, basically Welcome the same kind of thing mm -hmm. that yes. would have. Because that's what we're hoping that if, if businesses and, and people that have needs or they want to sell something come to this event that we can get them to give us their information and, and possibly the way to fund something like that would be a, a small charge for someone to put something in it. Yeah. Are you targeting the new people so to do specific invites? That's what we, um, Julie had said that she has mm -hmm. lists that we would now we have no budget, so at first we thought postcards, but that's not going to work. No. <laughs> so um, maybe a direct email out to them, and then on their weekly um, email blasts that they send out, you know, just let it be known. We we have this little write-up that's getting turned into a poster, and then would put it around town so that mm -hmm. everybody would well, know. Your presence here will be noted in the newspaper. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking that Front Porch <coughs> Forum, yes, really, there's everybody that's moving into this town is now on Front Porch Forum. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So in, in that idea of a owner's manual for living in town, which is that's kind of a neat idea, it seems like the, the annual town report a page in there could could be a, a stepping stone towards that. Even if it doesn't have all the information, it could give some basics and, and recommend front porch form or what have you. To uh, you know, but that might be. And, yeah, and, and that's something that goes out every year to voters. every taxpayer, right? Yeah, that's that's a registered, voter. Registered, registered voter. Registered voter. Registered, yeah. voter. registered voter. voter, which is not necessarily every taxpayer. True. But when they come in, there's. Always a handful there if they're yeah. And, and, and a lot do a lot of organizations need new volunteers because our volunteers yeah. are aging. <laughs> what a surprise. That's true across the board. I would think a little <clears throat> information to get out to the people that do have businesses and everything that they could put together a little blurb about their business mm -hmm. and drop mm -hmm. it off at the town office and you could almost Put a staple in it and take it over to the Pierce Hall when you do have something like right. that with a little. Because we are going to have bags that we can put stuff in yeah. for people that can't come on and that I, day. I like the idea of the town report. 
Um, because it's uh, if we could even just do a one page. It's one page. page. Yeah. 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 It's um, just a little synopsis of what's going on, and, and then it also has all the other yeah. deeper information about how sexy it is to be a volunteer. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Julie and I get lots of phone calls from new people like, what do I do with my trash? And, you know, yeah. like just yeah. who yeah. mows my lawn? And a lot yeah. of questions like that. that. So yeah. we've been having thoughts about this for a long time. Yeah. This is mm -hmm. awesome. Use a local realtor. Yeah, we'll do any. <laughs> we'll do and eventually we down the road, you know, with different issues that come up in the community to have a community meeting then Hopefully, lots of people. Get yeah. some volunteers from that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 Sounds good. And so, Julie, if I talk to you tomorrow, can Neighbor. you help me with the yep. rebuild? If you've got a second. Got a second. Should go grab one for you right now. Oh, yeah. That's right. It's easy. Just a quick application. And then we just pass on. Oh, yeah. Okay. You guys are closed the rest of the week anyway, right? Kind of, yeah. Oh, okay. No, We're just okay. yeah. cleaning and getting ready for the new year. Yep. That's right. We'll be in and out out here hours. Well, thank you for taking this on. Yeah. Yeah, that's a little a good project yeah. idea. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. Good thing. Well, you know, Carolyn Kortschank really needs the credit because she comes <laughs> to every meeting and mm -hmm. she's just... She she knows a lot. She's been yeah, here a long yeah, time. Yeah, a lot of energy. Yeah. 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 Good. I'm gonna go grab that. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yep. So, is there an easy way of uh, listing out new comers to town <laughs> over the last couple of years? Was that? <coughs> well, I think that. I think whatever Christian's changed. little weekly thing is one thing. The people that are on the on this meeting, mm -hmm. people that we do have email addresses for. And I would think the school would be another place you might be able to mm -hmm. get some input from Erica down there. I can for run a famous. report on all properties that have been sold, but it doesn't give me the names of who bought yeah. them. I have all but that. But you know, any yeah. new family so that have moved yeah. in would go through the school. Two or three or, yeah. So that part would be something that wouldn't tell all the people that are living here, but necessarily. But yeah, but a starting point. Right. Yeah. All right. Uh, the next item on the agenda, we have... Um, a uh, request from the folks at the Huntington House for a letter of support in their application to a uh, grant from the Community Recovery and Revitalization Program. Um, I was, um, I guess we didn't really get much information about what exactly they're planning on doing. And, and my thoughts were that this was... Um, I mean, they're talking about solar and reworking the parking lot and, <clears throat> and condominiums or, or housing changes. It seems like that, and my thought, that is a presentation that might be one uh, made to the planning board just to know what they're, it's just not really clear what we'd be signing on to support here mm -hmm. in my mind. I think that, that that's my take on it. Have you had read? Yeah, letter? I have no idea what it's all about. Really. It's pretty um, open-ended. I'm surprised they didn't come to explain it. Yeah, uh, we would like to probably see um, the application for the grant. Yeah. Well, I, I would think they'd want to go through zoning to yeah. see if this is even a feasible well, that thing. To... My, uh, my, my, I got a call, phone call initially talking about wanting to develop a brewery in the second floor of the barn there. And um, it didn't mention any of this, the rest of the stuff that's list, listed in here. So it um, sounds, like sounds like a lot, actually. Yeah. Um, and all those, I think, any of these activities would be allowable in town, and there's no reason not to support it. But I think we need a clear picture of what exactly we'd be supporting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. So Should we invite them to a next select board meeting? Or what do you uh, I would invite or them to the planning meeting, which is on the 3rd. Yeah, okay. okay. Would that be very okay. weird yeah. mention of green? <laughs> yeah, we'll mention green the brewery, byproduct. They're going to take care of their green byproduct. 
Which is the only reference well, yeah, to the brewery. The uh, brewery <laughs> issue is what happens with yes, uh, the town Yes, there's more septic. byproduct there's, than yeah. there are cows to eat it now or something. Yeah. So I'd, I'd um, recommend that they come to the planning board meeting. Okay. Yeah. So you want a with table the, or something? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Keeping in mind also they don't own the condos next door. It's still the privately owned. Yeah, they're not, managing, yeah. But they it's don't not real it. clear what their yeah. intention is. Hmm. All right, um, we got next on the agenda um, a um, application for winter maintenance of Oak Lodge Road. Is it um, is it the time warp or is this something that we did a few weeks it's ago? The it, this is, um, we do this every year. So right. They, yeah. Every year. I thought that we had done this relatively recently, but not this year yet. Mm -hmm. I do have a question. Is yeah. that person specific? Like, can anybody, like, if that's approved, can anybody plow that road, or is it just whoever puts the application? No, this is an application um, <laughs> by Kenny himself, yeah. So, is he the person that has to do it, or can other people do it? Well, because he fills it out. He's, he's, he's got the responsibility. He can hire someone else to do it, but it's his responsibility. Of to have it plowed? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Whether he hires it out or not, that's up to him. It's up to him. Yeah. yeah. But it's his, the um, okay. adjacent to the road then gives him that you know, reason to be, make that request. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> um, so you've lived there. Have you had, I know this has been a, a, a topic of discussion over the past few years about this road. Has, what's your experience been of? have maintained it over the last couple winters? Well, I mean, I'm concerned because it's plowed, but, you know, and, and I certainly don't want sand on it, but it gets pretty, you know, I'm not sure how safe it is for people to be driving through. There are people who know the road, you know, that then they would know, but I just get concerned that mm. If any anybody just goes on it, it's it's not maintained the way the two, town road, yeah, yeah right. the two town roads are. Yeah, right. you know, yeah. Mm. but it's not supposed to be, right? Because it's no. a class four road, right, right, right. 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 <clears throat> but I I think it's a safety issue. That's all. But yeah. I don't drive on it. Yeah. Well, it does have a requirement of a, an insurance policy naming the town as an additional insured. Um, that I don't know if that would cover over to an accident happening on that, or if it's just for him hurting himself. We want to make that. sure that we have that binder updated every year, like we do for all contractors. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I'd move to approve that. Okay. Yeah. A second. All in favor? Aye. All right. Thank you. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, a uh, recurring theme um, now that it's winter is the issue of people plowing snow across town roads. Uh, there's um, John had just brought it up <coughs> this to me up. Uh, the other day, and he just wanted us to mention it so that it's on the record and also put it in the paper mm -hmm. just to let people know he realizes this last storm that a week ago there was a rough storm for everyone and yeah. and uh, it was pretty hard for everybody so he understands that he just would like it to be uh, cautious that it yeah, is right. out there it's not you know yeah you're not supposed to do it so yeah. if you can hope so you know, avoid it bold type martha Martha's not here tonight. But, no, yeah. Martha. Yeah. Yeah. All right. yes. yeah. That's all John wanted to say. And people may not realize it's not just an arbitrary thing, but when yeah. someone plows across a town road, uh, they very often will leave little ridges, right. and then those yeah. can freeze up, and then when the big trucks do come down the road, that, right. uh, that could lead to, you know, 
there's a good write up in that, like using those words in that book. And I took a clip of it out of there and put it's, it in my weekly email to the town yeah, people really that have signed up for it. So and we do have the power helps. to impose fines. And, yeah. And, yep. So. Um, and Julie put that in the paper too, right? Like as your own little snippet. Did you get it in there that picture, day? Or picture, was it picture, late? I don't know if it got in there or not. So. Yep. What's that? F take a photo. Picture, picture, picture. Yeah. Ugh. Further violations may result in the issuance of a tra traffic ticket, which carries a $50 waiver penalty, or a civil action may be brought under Section 1105, which carries a fine not to exceed 1000 plus costs. Right. There we go. Mm -hmm. yep. That's from the state. Right. Yeah, That's exactly. The, yeah, orange book. <clears throat> but mainly, we don't... Um, need someone that maybe is not used to driving on winter roads right. to be cruising down our perfectly maintained roads and all of a sudden yeah, hit an yeah. ice patch because someone plowed their slush across our town road. Jump. Yeah, that's, jump, right. that's We would be able to happens. handle it, but... Yeah, okay. all right. so, um, we got the bid packet for the West Hill Bridge replacement. Yes, there is, is a binder. binder. Um, <laughs> it's big. Did you bring it out, boss? Oh. No, big um, no, it's not. It's excuse not, me. Not um, here. It yeah. is big. I, I have it. Um, I've been working. Well, we've been working with Jason at DHB, um, and he had asked that we have the select board review it, um, and then sort of like okay it, so we mm -hmm. can pass that okay on to him, so he can finalize it. I everything. have read it. You have read it, and oh, I've read it too. Two hundred and ten pages. Two hundred eight pages. Yeah. Um. It is uh, pretty standard, yep. um, federally subsidized I read all that. type of grant. No, no, just the first part. <laughs> I did. I read it all. I didn't read it. Um, no. There's a lot of there's a lot of tables in there. Yeah. And, um, I also requirements for materials. All requirements. Yeah. yeah all yeah. of that's in there, and so yeah. that's pretty pretty standard. I did talk with Brian Austin about it. I called him, and he said it's just that. They were, it's up to us to choose the contractor, and they would like to know. They don't have necessarily have to know who it is because he's got to meet all the standards that they have there. And I told him that we would inform him of our yeah. selection and yeah. that he could mm -hmm. have a say in, in that if he wanted to. Right, and it's a bonded job. Right, yeah. so they're, they're all aware of it, and so it's, it's all pretty good. I think it's set up all right. So once we approve this, when does it go out to bid? It's supposed to go out this spring. And you know, right. it's supposed to go out in January. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They're going to put it out in January. Yeah. Selection will be in March. March. So January is so next week, isn't it? I moved to approve this packet. Move to approve the bid packet. Yeah. Let's see who we shake out. Okay. Hey. All in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. All right. So I think we, we have to sign something for that, I think, in there, don't we? Um, not yet. Not I don't yet. know. Yet. No, we just this have to, just, I yeah. just, now I just have to touch base with Jason, let him know that you guys approved it. Um, he'll do the double checking, have you guys sign something and then we can post it. All right. And cool. Julie and I have instructions of where to post and who to go cool. to and all that stuff. Yep. Great. Well, that's, um, exciting. It comes within their budget. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. See if that bridge makes it through one more winter. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Actually, the construction... Double. Is, is that for this summer? Or yeah. Would be, yeah. yeah. Hopefully. Hopefully. The, yeah. the, the June and ending in October. October. Yes. Yeah. The, so I got okay. an October finished and completed date on it. Um, anybody on Zoom from the library tonight? No. No. Nope. Um, any re more reports from the highway other than the, telling people to stop plowing or snow? <laughs> <laughs> um, John and I, we took the little... Uh, drug course there through the state uh, one day last uh, week or a week before, mm -hmm. I guess. Week before. And also we met with uh, Greg Russ and Cricket over at the the uh, River Riverbrook Drive for that culvert replacement. Mm -hmm. They're going to uh, uh, put that out pretty soon. I signed a paper on that, or Got it ready for him to, to go anyway, so they're going to put that out to bid. Yeah. And they'll be going forward with that. And that's 100% funded from them. So, And John's put his uh, stamp of approval on it. Um, 
and we, you know, so that it's going to cure a little bit of the slope on the hill, which they're all for doing that. Yep. Uh, so it looked like it was a plus in a go, and John was happy, so right. we'll go forward yeah. with it. And that's about it. Other than that, the the guys have been working plenty of overtime. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they're, a bit of a break for Christmas. Yeah, bit. and things have held up, but they've, you know, he's patched, John's had to patch them up a little bit. Yeah. But that's standard equipment. It's been rough, and I just hope they can get some rest for the rest of the week. Mm -hmm. Not have to worry about yeah. it too much. They've been busy and done a good job. Mm -hmm. Terry on there? Nope, he's not. Nope. Or Jeff? Nope. Nope. All right. Um, Grant update. Pretty pretty quiet this week. Um, on the 13th, the Rogers Brook application was submitted. So we should hear about that like maybe in a month or so, they said. And also, I would like to report that we have received additional ARPA funds. There were two towns um, in that did not accept their federal funds. Really? Um, so they divvied them up. So we received an extra $76 and 68 cents. Lunch money. <laughs> so that's in our savings now for our butt. So we can fill up the trucks. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Ooh. Um, we can change that. our tire. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you'd be excited to hear that. So. Oh, man. And that's it. We're going budget crazy now. Yep. <laughs> Hmm. I wonder what town is going to accept Yeah, I was wondering why a town ARPA wouldn't money. take the money. Or did they just not Maybe it was them? a gore. <laughs> Maybe it was a gore. <laughs> they don't know how to spend it. Pools, pools <clears throat> um, anybody have any public comments out there? Frank, were you going to bring up parking on Route 100? Um, I, yeah, that was another thing. I'm sorry. I, I kind of spaced that out. Um, Chris Bump had called me during the week and asked me if we had had an ordinance or if we could mention it about parking on Route 100 during the winter. Just because there was a car parked at the, on the Route 100 side of the park for two or three days just before that big storm. But whoever's car it was, they were able to get it. They got it out of it before. I mentioned to Chris that we did have a parking ordinance in town and on the park, especially mm -hmm. in front, there was no parking there during the out the night hours yeah. in the winter, and and um, they the state had you know uh, Ryan down Ryan Slack down at the Bethel Garage there asked us to uh, make sure we just let that out there so I know that could go in the paper as a reminder. Yep, we also have. Um tickets that we put in the windshield that people that if they don't move their car they're going to get towed or something so maybe when the sheriff comes it might be around. good to have like those available like be right before the storm just to put them in there when you know yeah. so they well we haven't them. really had too many instances no. with that i noticed yeah. that same car was, was car. parked in that same spot again this week not during a storm but it's a yeah yeah so but whoever it is they they seem to move it every day I guess. well you could you could ask um What's his name? The sheriff? Oh, Mike? To run the plate. <laughs> yeah, I was going to do that if, if I didn't, if the guy left it there. Mike. I told the state if, if there's cars there, plow them in. Yeah. Because that's, I know, I, I don't imagine we'll see uh, <laughs> Nick Bakudo's van park down no. there. <laughs> he, they plowed that in last year. Holy cow, he must have spent half a day. A whole day. <laughs> Did he spend it? was a whole day. It actually was even more than that. <laughs> Man, that, they plowed that in good. <laughs> but, you know, it's just a matter of... So we do have that ordinance anyway, so yeah. I did tell Chris that. Okay. But we should po post that in the paper, too, yeah. for America. That would be good. Yeah. Thank you, Nancy. All right. That's us. Yep. I think that's it for tonight. I'd move to adjourn and pay some bills. A second. All in favor? All right. Thank you for coming out.